Hey, what's up, it's Aaron, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to import your contacts to your new Active Campaign account. These are your existing contacts who maybe you have from another um, email system like MailChimp, or you um, have them in uh, QuickBooks or Intake Queue, et cetera. A couple of things I want uh, to make sure you understand is that if you have a contact and they've not given you permission to send them emails, you can still import them. We just have to make sure that they're marked correctly so that when you send them a welcome message, we can then move them into one of your automations, but we're not gonna keep sending them emails if they've never given you permission to send them emails. If they're a patient and you've sent them emails before because they're a patient, you can import them as a patient to your list and say, hey, you're a patient in my list, Here's welcome to our brand new email newsletter, etc. But I don't want you just grabbing a bunch of emails off the internet or buying an email list or even just importing a list that you got from somewhere or, you know, and people aren't suspecting you because they'll start saying this is spam because you've never sent them an email before. And if you have an email list from somewhere else or contacts and customers, you can import them. We just have to just manage them properly. So I'm not going to go through every way to get your uh, email list from your current software because like there's no possible way for me to know exactly where it is but what you need to do is you need to export your contacts and so the information we need is their name preferably first name last name phone number email address those are the main things we need or actually we need name first name and email address that's the, all we need if you can get a couple other bits of information that would be great. So you need to um, get it into a CSV file. So let's say, I mean, you'll have hopefully more than four people, <laughs> but there's a couple things that we need to do. We need to create a file of patients or customers. So one file is gonna be a list of customers and the other file is gonna be a list of prospects or not customers. So if it all comes in one, then you're just gonna need to organize. Let's say you need to go in and you just look at everyone and go customer, customer, I can hold down shift and it'll select all. If I can hold down my command, it'll select just two of them like this. And if those aren't customers, I can delete it. And then I would save as um, <clears throat> test import contact file customer, right? And so I have to have one that's customers and one file that's prospects because we have to upload them uh, differently because we have in here, we have lists. And when I import people, so this is my wife's account. This isn't the account that I've set up for you. Let me show you. I'm going to import into my wife's account so I don't mess up my template accounts. But in the account I've set up for you, there's going to be like clients, leads, and blog subscribers. So if I import a list, everyone I import has to go into one list at a time. So if I, if I bring in a, a you know, 100 contacts, I can't, as I import them, can't separate them into clients or leads. I have to really just put them into one or the other. I can put them into leads and blog or clients and blog, but I can't put half of them into leads and half of them into clients. So to start, the Excel or CSV files have to be separated into clients or customers and prospects. And once I have it, um, I believe it has to be a CSV file so we can also do save as, and I can, if it's an Excel file, I can just kind of come down and do comma separated values and I can save it as a CSV file. So you may need to spend, it might take you 10 minutes to go through your whole export from QuickBooks, let's say, or from your current system and separate them out. Or your current system might be able to separate them out for you. So if you're using QuickBooks, everyone in there is gonna be a, a customer. If you're using MailChimp, you should be able to export a list of just your prospects and a list of customers. So here like with Andra's, you know, we've got these. I can do, um, let's see, delete, delete engagement, view contacts. I could go to view contacts and then I can do export contacts. And then you export your contacts. And then let's say I wanna import contacts. I can totally import contacts here in ActiveCampaign from the list and import from file. And if I want to import, when I'm ready to import, here's how we're gonna do it. We're gonna to go to contacts and then I can do import contacts, import from file, and I can go find my file, open, 
All right, so let me go back to my file and just show you what you want to do is you want to have a column that's, let me see if I can make this bigger. You want to have one column that's first name, one column that's last name. If you can't split them up, that's okay. Active campaign can import full name. Phone number, address, you might have other things like IP address and all this other junk. Like, ignore those. <clears throat> the main ones we want are first name, last name, email, phone, and address. If it's exported and it already has those, great. Don't worry about it. just know what they're called because when we go to import, we need to map them over. You see how it says first name, first name, last name, email address, phone. It says do not import this field. Well, I can go down here to phone. Address, and I can go down here, um, not IP address, like printed address, and I don't have a field, so I could add a new field if I want their mailing address in my account. But let's say IP address, like you don't need to import that. Um, that's unnecessary. And then I would select the list I want, and then any tags. So what I suggest you do when you import these is put like, just create a tag that's existing um, patients. And I'm gonna put test in there because I'll know to remove the tag um, later on. But existing patients and then tab. Now when I import it, it's gonna create this tag as like existing patients or existing customers. Right here, we wanna import them as active contact and click update existing because what that'll do is if they're already in your system, it'll update them with this tag and into that list. You can also say if these were patients, you would put existing patients and then you would put patients. So now they're gonna get tagged as patients and they get tagged as existing test. Now when you do this, if you have an automation that's triggered with this tag, and this is where it gets tricky, it'll run that automation. So what you wanna do is, so if I wanna do that and I wanna import people without triggering the automation, because maybe these patients came five years ago. New patient scheduled, new patient after first visit. Okay, I don't know that this will be that, but let's say, so this is triggered with the, with the um, form and not the tag. So it won't trigger this automation. So good, I don't have to do it. Let's just say this was triggered by the tag patients. You could go and toggle this automation to inactive. Now I could go import everyone. They won't get triggered into this automation. Once they're done importing, I would come back and turn this automation back onto active. Hopefully that makes sense. This can get a little complicated, um, but if you mess up, no worries, people won't care. Um, and if you can do neuroanatomy or you've gotten this far, like just remember, it's just go slow, map it out. But if when you import them, adding a tag like ebook, back pain ebook, is gonna trigger an automation and you don't want them, you know, they got it like months ago. Like I believe this one's triggered by the tag ebook. If I was gonna add that, I would come in and make this inactive and then go back and finish importing and click on import now. And then once they're done importing, then you come back and you make the automation active again. And as they come in, it won't start that automation for them. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna go back and you're going to, so you can import your clients list and then you come back and do it again and import your prospects list. Now, invariably, sometimes you'll mess things up and that's okay. Just do not worry about it at all. Just, you know, measure twice, cut once. Then what you're gonna do is you'll see when you go to contacts, you'll have a whole bunch of people like in your contacts, like they're not in here because this is the sandbox account. If you want to start a contact in automation manually, there's a couple ways you can do that. You go to the contact and you can edit bulk edit contacts. And when you go to bulk edit contacts, there's an option to enter an automation or add a tag. And if you know that the tag triggers an automation, you can add the tag to the contacts or you can trigger an automation to the contacts or both. Um, you can take people out of an automation by doing bulk edit. You just need to make sure you go to let's say list and edit all, and then you can trigger um, people to start a, an automation. Going back to what I said before, you don't wanna trigger an automation to someone who was a patient a year ago and it says, welcome to our clinic, you're a brand new patient. So here's what I suggest you do. I suggest you import your existing contacts and you tag them you know, as patient to the patient list with a existing patient tag. So now I know, okay, the existing patients have a separate tag so I can email all of them specifically if I want to get specific.
And then I can send a campaign email to them and say, hey, Mrs. Jones, this is Dr. LeBauer. I want to welcome you to our brand new um, like newsletter. It's not really a newsletter, but a brand new newsletter. And I'll be updating you on important things happening in our clinic. By the way, I wrote a brand new ebook. I <clears throat> would love to send you a copy. Just click the link below if you'd like to get it. And then you just put a link to your ebook opt-in form. Remember? Um, oops, it's under sites. Forms. You put a link to that form in there. And anyone who gets it, who wants it, will click on that. And now they'll enter that automation um, on their own volition. And that's the best way to um, get people in there. You might even say, hey, you know, I've got room for a few um, total body diagnostic exams this week. If you've been struggling with X, Y, and Z, here's a link where you can um, request availability and you send them a link to the Ask About Availability form. So assuming you have these set up correctly, you can now send campaign emails out to an existing list of people. And they will then manually move them into your automations, especially if they've, you know, opted into one of those a long time ago or didn't versus putting them through something that they didn't want. And I want to make that clear. Like we don't want to put them into something they don't want. And um, people will start going back through these um, on their own volition. And when you start sending emails to a list that maybe you haven't emailed, just know that a lot of people are going to unsubscribe and that's okay. We don't want them in there anymore. If, if a message like that isn't something that they're, you're like, oh, I don't want to hear from this person anymore. Just do not worry about the unsubscribes that you get. And what you can do is you just send them value-based emails and give them links to go do other things, watch videos, hey, get this free book or request an appointment, etc. And then that'll get them moving through your automations when they want it to happen with their permission. Hopefully that uh, makes sense. The other <clears throat> thing that you can do, you can start people in an automation who are currently in it. But my number one suggestion would be is that if, let's say you're using MailChimp and someone is in your free ebook sequence over on MailChimp, bring them into the active campaign, but don't put them through the same email sequence. Just let that email sequence end over at MailChimp and then new people will go into it over an active campaign or patients specifically. If you have a list of five emails you send all patients over in MailChimp and now you have 10 here in active campaign, let them finish that out. It's kind of like when you raise your rates, you let um, the existing people complete their plan of care and you roll new people into a new plan of care at, an, at a higher rate. It's the same thing we're going to do if you're already using email automation somewhere else. So that's how you import your contacts, your existing contacts into active campaign. If you have questions, you know, uh, you can come and uh, ask them in the group. There are other videos here to help you go deeper into um, setting up and customizing your active campaign account. Don't hesitate to go to activecampaign.com and search their um, help documentation. It's got a lot of great videos and help documentation on how to maximize your active campaign account um, using our preloaded emails and our preloaded uh, automations. Thanks so much, and we'll see you on the next video.